homies. No, Jesus is one of my homies. He my ace cool, or my ace cool. <laughs> You know, me and Jesus, you know, we rock together. We do a little more than rock together. Jesus, keep me alive. Amen. Amen. Jesus, holds me. He sustains me. His way of life informs my way of life. And I find it to be particularly important for you and I who really are attempting to live this life to wrestle with the ridiculous claim of this gospel. Because I believe when you and I do not really wrestle with this claim, our gospel, our faith could be one left open to the fragility of doubt, left uninterrogated by the harshness of life. Yes. And when your life is harsh and you have not interrogated your faith, how many of you know your faith will get a little shame? I believe that sometimes sitting here and asking, what does it really mean? What is at stake? Why must I respond with the kind of power and hope and courage and audacity? Why must I wrestle with the radical claims of this gospel? I believe it's because if this is really as radical as it is, feels like it is on the surface. Could it be that that may be the source of liberation that God is trying to bring in many of our lives who are caught in the vice grip of pragmatic, mundane ordinariness? Could it be that if Jesus is not raised from the dead, you may not have the kind of radical hope you need to break through your own death-filled situation. Could it be that if Jesus is not raised from the dead and you are not totally living in light of that revelation and that truth, that you're willing to settle for some situations as they are? Because keep it real, the worst thing for many of us that can happen is somebody can take our life. But how many know when you ain't afraid to die? And you are emboldened to live, you may even live your life differently when fear has lost its grip in your life. I don't know about you, but I want to be someone who's not so afraid to love the unlovable. Who's not so afraid to reach out to those who others see are unreachable. Who are not afraid to dream, dream that other folks say are not possible. I want to be someone who has the access to the source of that which everyone thinks is ridiculous, but I know God keeps doing it over and over again, blowing the expectations of those who do not have the capacity to see beyond death. On this resurrection in Easter morning, I want to ask you, would you, can you imagine what life would look like if you and I really lived as if we are free already? Let me ask maybe even another way. If life really was only about the material, physical world, if all that we could imagine really at the end of the day only was based off of what we could do, knowing the limitations of ourselves, what task would you shrink back from? If everything in the world depended on you and your strength, what endeavor would you quit? What relationship would you abandon? What struggle would you succumb to? Now, we do know, in the sense of all that is serious, we are aware that there are indeed realities in our lives that are indeed feeling overdetermined by the finality of death, of loss. One of our good friends most recently passed away, and, and it was unexpected, and we knew that there was a struggle of, 
of addiction and all these other kinds of, of vices that, that are common to many people. And, and even after the struggle to overcome, uh, they succumb to this, 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 this hurt, this harm, this disease of addiction. And me and, 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 and one of my brothers, we were talking about it, and we were, you know, just mourning and lamenting and crying that we weren't able to, to, to bring enough resources and support. And, and I talked to another pastor friend, and she told me, she said, you know, well, just be aware that if God didn't heal them in this life, hmm. God certainly healed them in the next. Amen. Right? And, you know, at first that sounded like some platitudes, like, boy, that is some kind of fantastical kind of stuff. Where do you preachers come up with this stuff? But then I remembered how that kind of faith emboldened so many before us, and dare I say, so many today, to live our lives not bound by the finality of trouble, but fueled by the hope and possibility of tomorrow, yeah. right? That God is able to win even when the darkest night is descending upon us. Yeah. This is the truth of what is at stake when you and I consider the light awakening and breaking forth into our lives. And I want to believe that we are not the first folk to have to wrestle with this, nor will we be the last. Can you imagine how the disciples felt after they had given everything, their whole life, to Jesus, to walk with Jesus, to, to, to betray their friends and their families, and all of a sudden, Jesus talking about, oh, my kingdom is coming, and we get ready to do this thing, and they're like, yeah, Jesus, I'm in, I'm down, and then Jesus on the cross, they're like, what in the world? Man, Jesus, you know, you know, followers like, you know, you know, Nicodemus, you know, coming to visit you in the nighttime. <laughs> you know, some of us do, you know, that's how we follow Jesus undercover, amen. <laughs> folks, folks be surprised, amen. I mean, you know, are you a Christian, really? Wow. <laughs> you got a good undercover thing going on, man. That's not how these disciples were. These disciples following and walking around with Jesus. Jesus out there in the religious in the religious arena, telling all the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the day, y'all ain't nothing but a brood of snakes and vipers. And his disciples like, that's right, Jesus, tell them. <laughs> Every time she starts to think, like some of y'all folk do with family, y'all just start. Jesus walk up into into the pipe.
All through the night, they probably didn't sleep. They just thought, oh man, this is about to be bad. <laughs> Saturday, all day Saturday, in the house. <laughs> feel like, you know, here's the way we try to keep it real. You feel like God's let you down. Like, man, God, I, 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 I did everything you, at least what the preacher told me to do, because I, you know, I'm trying to figure out which voice is the right voice, because, you know, you know, my grandma would be here and you talking all the time, and I can't figure out, you know, what's going on with her. Like, oh, baby, just, you like, and you listen to your grandma, because, you know, seems like when you listen, and then when you start listening to your voice, you're kind of like, dang, I thought you told me that he was mine, she was mine, that job was mine, you get it, and then you ask God to take you out of it. So you don't trust your voice. Hello, somebody, right? So you listen, you follow. I prayed, I fasted, I gave tithes, I volunteered at the community center, I studied, I forgave, and, and, and where are you, God? Friday, Saturday? Anyone ever living in a Friday, Saturday moment? Yeah. Well, guess what, my brothers and sisters? We're not the first ones that have had to endure. We can run to Easter. Thank God I'm always running to Resurrection Sunday, but in order to get to Resurrection, guess what? Yeah. You gotta walk through the death zone.
ready to worship. And give God what God deserves. Not because God is doing for you what you think he should do. But because of what God has already done for you. Ooh, help me in here today. You see, we can learn from, from these, we can learn something from these sisters. These sisters showed up while it was still dark, filled with gratitude, filled with love, filled with courage. Hello, somebody. Ready to worship their crucified Messiah. Things weren't going the way they wanted it to go. But because they showed up in the dark, they got a chance to experience and respond to the light. Ooh, these are some bad sisters, y'all. Especially when you look at how the men who were there in the other accounts responded. You had some trained soldiers. These killers. These folks that helped conquer all of the Roman Empire. They, they, they definitely got weapons and they got all Out here killing each other, doing all kinds of stuff. 
because they're so filled with misery and, 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 and hopelessness, and they're trying to make their little budget off a little bit of drugs here and there, ain't making no money, so everybody's just filled with all kind of rage and violence. And we're walking down the street, and I see the skull of some kind of created being. I think it was a dog or a cat, and he was too big to be a rat. He saw hope. <laughs> <laughs> and it had decomposed there on the ground. And you know, we you know stopped with full work, and I saw another one. And you know, we knocked on one of the homes, and I was talking to the person, you know, I was like, man, you know, listen, when's the last time, you know, the garbage folk had come by and Oh, they don't come anymore. This American city don't get garbage pickup. They don't get any. And, and this person is out there living in a house with decomposed animals, abandoned homes around. And, 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 and you know, to them it wasn't, you know, they were kind of upset about it. I was like, you know, just got to do what we got to do. I mean, you know, we can get used to living in some dead places. You may not have no decomposed animal skull in front of your house, but I dare you to take a look inside your self. Just think of the things that you keep holding on to, the ways of thinking that we keep holding on to. Some of us keep chasing after these Solutions by corrupt and morally bankrupt politicians, CEOs, and we wonder why won't they bring us any life? Because there ain't no life there. Hello, somebody. That at some moment, at some time, you and I have to move beyond the places that have proven to us to be nothing but death zones. Start asking God, how can I be? to invest my life and my time in places that can bring me life. The angel told him, why y'all looking for Jesus among the dead? Obviously looking for Jesus among the dead because you think he's dead, but guess what? He's risen. It makes me be reminded that if these folk can follow Jesus, they can do all these practices, but they still can't fully understand what God is up to. So you better get off your little high horse there, brothers and sisters. Because sometimes you ain't going to know what God is up to until you get to your situation and start to realize that, man, God ain't in this. <laughs> Anybody ever had that light come on? Ooh, if that's all that time, energy, money, honey, all of it. And you get to the end of the road and be like, what? Ten years! <laughs> I'm give you ten years back. I tell you, get it back. Stop looking for life in dead places. Don't keep going to the cemetery looking for life. You gotta move on, or you may miss resurrection. You may miss the light awakening in your life. I love Ed Murphy, you know, he was Buckley and sang it out loud. He said, looking on the... And what? All the wrong places. Looking on the... <laughs> Hello, somebody. I, I, I can sympathize with them. They went to the place where they thought life would be. Now, it would be on them if they kept showing up after they were told, ain't no life over there. First time, thank you, God, for this revelation. You show up the next day, but I thought, this is, no. God, keep moving. My question to you then, my brothers and sisters, what people, places, and things still have you looking for life where there is none? Last thing I'll say, and then we'll ask God to give us some time to just do a little bit more reflecting. Verse number eight, 
all the way to the end. The angels, the divine messengers, this is what they say to these sisters as they're visiting this two with no Jesus. Remember how he told you. Then they remember. Let me say it again. Remember what Jesus told you. Dot, dot, dot. Then they remember. How do you know sometimes you need a good reminder of what God is up to in your life? You're not, I'm not as gifted like other brilliant people I know that have a photographic and maybe some of you do. You know, I was one of the folk in class and I had to read the same thing 10 times before I could even understand the first sentence that I had to read it another 10 times. So I had to take notes. And even in my taking notes, if I didn't have folk to remind me of the notes I took, <laughs> hello somebody. Really? I mean, they be doing the wrong thing. The repetition of me being reminded of the notes that I took of what I had read and learned gave me the power to overcome those texts when they came. I think that for many of us, the resurrection story is about you and I remembering that God said you will overcome. Now the world is always trying to convince you why you don't have enough. Ain't it good news that you can be reminded that God says you have more than you need. Yes. And the world is always trying to remind you of how your look, your color, your gender, your class, your bank account, your education is never enough to reach that that full success metric of whiteness, white supremacy, wealthy, whatever kind of ideal you want to put up there that can't nobody reach. Ain't it good to know that you got somebody that's going to tell you, remember. Remember God said that if I am with you, I am more than the world against you. Remember what God said that even when you go before people and you don't know what to say, God says, my spirit will give you the words to say. Remember what God said that it is the Father's good pleasure to do within you the will of God. Remember what God said he would never leave you nor forsake you. Remember what God said that ten will fall at your right hand and ten thousand at your left hand. But nothing will come close to you. Remember what God said, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be with you. It's time for some of us to get a better memory if we're going to experience resurrection because you won't have a hard life by him. I'm here to tell you. Amen. You, 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 you're not going to just skate through life without any trouble. You're not going to skate through life without any opposition. You're not going to skate through life without any tension. But if you can trust and believe that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead Amen. 
but now I can proclaim with boldness. Death does not have the final say. I can proclaim with boldness that even though situations may seem like they are finalizing my fate of loss and deficiency because I am powered by this Jesus, this resurrected Jesus. My imagination is not limited by the American Empire. My possibilities are not dictated by the amount of money in my bank account. My salvation and soul for my family and my community is not dependent on, you know, if I can pray the right prayer at the right time with the right inflection point in the right building on the right day. Yes. But just like Jesus, the light of the gospel suddenly changed the condition of these folks. How many of you know there's a sudden they coming down your way? Come on, stand up real quick, real quick. I want you to be someone who is fully aware of the implications of this life that is awakening in our lives. It is not something that you should just take super lightly. It is not something that you should limit to just your spiritual well-being, but on your job, in your relationship, in your vocational work, as you teach kids, as you fight for justice, as you work in the municipalities and the systems and the structures, while you drive to work, while you walk the neighborhoods, while you care for your loved ones and those who are sick, while you struggle to keep your relationship and your family on good, sound ground, whatever it is, understand the possibility of Jesus suddenly turning your situation around. Whew, it's as close to you as the words in your mouth, as the lifting up of your hands, as the believing in your heart. Come on, grab the hand of someone next to you. Let's just take a moment to stop.